Hello everybody and welcome to another Ascalon Catacombs Explorable Tutorial, uh, I suppose we could call them tutorials. This is the third and final path through the dungeon. Uh, this is the difficult encounter you'll find in here. Um, this is the Howl, no not the Howling King, the, the Ghost Eater Path. Ghost Eater Path and um, what are we dealing with here? By the way this room's awesome, if you've played Guild Wars 1 you'll recognise it and it's bloody amazing. There's a statue of Grenth over there and you'll be seeing a lot of him. Or maybe not, because you'll be facing away from them. You see all these pillars here? Each of those is a trap activator. They have chains on them. You can run, run up and press F. And where we're stood about now, a lot of spikes will come up from the floor. Now, you're going to need to know this because a lot of gravelings are going to run at you. Yep. And you're going to need to defend for a certain amount of time. Yeah, so we have an NPC to defend. Once again, she can get overwhelmed once again, just like in the previous encounters, just like Hodgkins was, just like the gathering nodes were. Uh, but this time, rather than it being stuff burrows are going to spawn that you have to deal with, you're just going to have a horde of stuff charge at you. The footage you're watching right now is our first ever attempt at this area. Um, and you'll see how it goes. Oh, we spent a long time on this path, banging our heads against this wall. Keep using that analogy. I think we, we tried to overthink this one a bit too much. In the end, the solution is quite simple, and uh, we, we were probably kicking ourselves at the end of that. Yeah, I, I would certainly say when I want to come back to the catacombs, because I want the armor for this uh, this thing, I will probably suggest, I, I, I want to do it myself, and I'd suggest anyone else, this is the path you want to do. This is the easiest path in terms of probably the boss as well as the... Uh, the actual difficult encounter, this one here. I need a name for these, really. Uh, but this is what's going on, as you can see, if you read the dialogue there as we were going through the cutscene. We've got the traps, just as Mike explains, and a ton of things charging There's us. A ton of things charging us. I think at this point we all went, oh god, what's going to happen here? Yeah, so... But actually, the traps do a hell of a lot of damage to these tiny little things, so it's not too bad. Exactly, they do. Um, with proper timing you can kill most of them. Uh, some will slip through however as you can see here this is our first run. One thing about the traps they do have a cooldown okay. Um, there are five traps and five members of your party. The idea is that you're going to be dedicating someone to each trap. We spent a long time playing around not dedicating people to the traps and trying other things uh, and in fact the winning strategy doesn't involve that either but don't expect yourselves to ha be able to survive. Like We spent a long time having like three people in the middle and then two up on the sides. It doesn't quite work like that. I, I think at least having four players on the traps is the way to win this, as we'll see in a bit. Uh, but stuff slips Absolutely. through. Uh, our first time, stuff slips through, uh, and that, that's deadly. They will come up to the sides. They will hit your light armor classes very quickly. But what's the interesting thing about the enemies here? The, the weird thing about these is that there's tons and tons of these little hatchlings. You see so many of them, but if you actually stop a moment and take a look, hardly any of them are even attacking. They're actually not that dangerous. They're mostly there, I think, to cause panic. Yeah, yeah. And it certainly works, because we were running around like lunatics panicking. Oh god, there's so many gravelings everywhere, run away, run away. Yeah, so... Just don't worry about them that much. Yeah, you know, this will help people in particular um, when they're using the traps. You, It's got a cooldown, okay? And you need to know exactly where your spikes are coming up. Make sure everybody is fully aware of that before you try this for real. Um, but the, the small things, when you're looking to aim your traps, just try not to aim for gravelings because they don't do much damage. The little ones, they don't, the hatchlings, sorry, they don't do any damage to you at all. Some of them seem to hit you, particularly ones that come out of breeders, which I guess we'll mention in a second, will hit you, but the majority of them won't. So try and aim aim your, your spikes when you're using these traps uh, on those. As you can see, this is all fallen apart. This is our first run. Um, it is. That breeder down there that we have targeted has actually been alive ever since the first wave came in, and that's a champion. We needed to focus that guy down because he was causing a lot of trouble for us. Yeah, and not only that, what is the other thing about, about that champion? That you have to kill him, right? He's a part... Uh, you, you have to, yeah. Otherwise, he'll just stay there forever. He's a part of the, the progress. The progress will never go up. It'll never finish unless you kill that guy. Exactly, yeah. So you have a certain amount of gravelings you need to kill, as you can see there. And also, uh, this champion breeder will come in that you need to kill. He's not the only breeder that will come. There will also be other, like, uh, veteran breeders, if you will, that will come too. Scavengers too. and howlers and all sorts of nasty things. Yeah. So this is our attempt, uh, 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 one later on, where we're trying some more interesting things. As you can see there, I've got guardians stacking might. I thought this seemed quite nice. We have two guardians at the front who can use walls to stop the gravelings, to keep them in the, the traps a bit longer. We have uh, a car in the middle who can do a lot of nukes and then we've got two other characters one that's laying down lots of well one that's just dealing 
damage pretty much. Um, also manning traps too. Uh, but stuff still gets through. Stuff still gets through. This is incredibly difficult to do <laughs> pretty much. This is simply because we don't have enough people manning traps. That's all it, yeah. that's all it took. Yeah. Yeah, and also efficient use of the traps too is key to this, um, because... And make sure you wait until at least most of the enemies that you can see are in your trap. Don't just blow it as soon as the first guy comes in, because then you're going to have a cooldown and all the rest are going to run straight past. Yeah, um, as you can see, things fall apart really. If they get through, for me as a caster, I need to keep moving, as I've mentioned before. Um, you'll find yourself running up to these areas quite often around these sides, seeing what you can do. Now, there are some benefits to this. You can't be on traps, which is where you really need to be. Uh, you can, however, throw hills down on, on the NPC in the middle, which can be handy. And you can obviously AoE stuff every now and then from around, but it's not advisable. If things are leaking through, it's pretty much game over, I would say. Um, not unless everyone's like some kind of heavy armor class or seriously defensively spec'd, but even then, if you've not killed the, the right amount of Gravelings, you've got this breeder that you need to deal with, and how are you possibly going to do that? Uh, Absolutely. I just, I, I would have no idea. So anyway, this I would say the guys on the top left and right side of the traps can actually see these groups coming in, and you'll see all the, great, all, all the hatchlings are really, really tiny. If you see bigger Gravelings in there, it doesn't matter what they are, scavengers, howlers, breeders, whatever, as soon as those big ones are in range of your traps, you, you, you're going to want to hit them, hit the big ones, focus on the big ones, because the little ones aren't that dangerous and they die in one hit. The big ones will sometimes die in one hit, but sometimes it'll take more than one, so you want to make sure you get those in the traps. Here's a great example, by the way. You can see them crowding around me, but they're not doing any damage. These things don't attack you, as you can see here. So don't panic about them. It's the big ones that you need to worry, exactly as Mike is saying. Um, keep an eye out for those. Uh, but really, this I left in because I wanted to demonstrate. I feel like a lot of people are going to be having the same situation uh, where, with people fleeing around, and it just becomes a bit of a slaughter fest. The NPC herself is fairly, uh, she's got a fair amount of sustainer. She's quite, she's got quite a lot of survivability. Uh, but that's because the main point of this isn't to survive a certain amount of time. It is to defeat that breeder. Okay, you can kill the certain amount of, th um, uh, Gravelings, but the breeder itself is the big problem. And in fact, now we failed, as you can see here, one annoying thing about this is a lot of the enemies continue to exist, unlike in the other challenges. If you do fail it, though, just uh, get all your team and leave the area, because if you, if you leave, everything will suddenly burrow underground and despawn, you'll have to deal with it. Yeah. Okay, so here is our successful run. What did we do, Mike? With this run, you'll see our Guardian sat right in the middle of the traps there. Actually, we found out after a long, drawn-out battle that the traps don't hurt your teammates. And if we'd have known this to begin with, then we would have had a much easier time. But we've got four guys manning the traps. You can see on the map, all four people quite nicely positioned there. We've got a heavy armor class sat right in the middle of the traps there. He will gather aggro and keep everything in those traps for as long as possible. Now, I should mention now I should mention, that you don't necessarily need a heavy armor class. You don't need a heavy armor class. I must stress that. Don't think you need them. Because as long as you've got some guy that can dodge around and stay alive in those traps, that's all you need. And as long as he can keep stuff in those traps, you're going to kill it much, much faster. You see that breeder's health right now? Bang! Huge amount of damage from those traps. Yeah. Four hits from those traps, or five hits, will kill that breeder which is so much faster than trying to kill it with regular attacks. Look, look, Keep things in the traps. Yeah, look at the top right. Look at our progress right now. We've nearly killed all the Gravelings we have to and the Breeder. And we've only been going at this for a tiny amount of time. We've finally got a little bit of leakage here, but we've, we've, we've almost completed it. There you go. It's finished. We, we have successfully done it. That's the key to this. It's, it's, it feels like a different game. That is, I almost feel like... This is why I would suggest that you do this path if you want to farm this dungeon because that is so much easier than any other technique. I, I cannot stress enough that <laughs> do that. Have someone out keeping the aggro in the middle. Uh, make sure everyone's on the ball. You don't even need necessarily that much uh, efficient trap usage there because they'll be stuck in there for the longest time. Um, that was the first time we even tried that tactic. Uh, the Guardian didn't have too much problem surviving. As Mike says, there's plenty of people that can be survivable. Even I, as a light armor class, I feel like now that I'm 80 and I've got my certain specs up, um, with the amount of mobility you have, you, you can survive in there. And it's the, by far the easiest way to kill the breeder. Uh, just generally... I, I can't recommend it enough. I really can't. Do you have any other thoughts on that, Mike? Uh, any last thoughts, Mike? Um, 
It's a good question, actually. It's really that simple. It it's hard to say any any advanced tactics about that because honestly, it's about keeping everything in those traps and just killing them with the traps. It's really not that difficult once you've figured that out. Definitely. So hopefully this helps you if you're stuck on this, guys. We were stuck on it for a while. Figure that out, and it's just the easiest thing in the world, and it's very easy to recreate. So hopefully this helps you all, and we will see you next time for the last video in the Ascon series where we look at the bosses uh, at the end of each of these paths. We'll see you next time.